All those families that today shine according to their brilliant lineages had low and obscure beginnings. Juan de Mariana, La Dignidad Real y la Educación del Rey. Hello and welcome back again. The header that summarizes chapter six regarding what happened between Don Quixote and his niece and housekeeper, and which is one of the most important chapters in this entire history, echoes the kind of ridiculous overstatement that we find throughout Don Quixote. However, in the context of the racialist atmosphere of inquisitional Spain, there's a hint of sincerity here. This is because the chapter features Don Quixote's most radically humanist speech about lineage. Humanist intellectuals, many of them self-taught from Machiavelli to Erasmus, argued that personal virtue was not an inherited characteristic, a subversive idea in a caste society that placed so much emphasis on one's ancestry. Two points about the beginning of this chapter. Cervantes uses the adjective impertinent twice, recalling his supposed compositional indiscretion in part one's novel of the Curie's impertinent. Also, his tone is once again political. Don Quixote's comment, if I were king, recalls the theoretical musings of our three arbitristas in chapter one. Did you know, unlike Renaissance humanists such as Erasmus or Vives, the so-called old Christians of Spain and their conservative allies in the Inquisition held that an individual's characteristics were inherited. According to this more orthodox view, family status and bloodline mattered far more than personal merit. When the housekeeper argues that Don Quixote should be a courtly knight instead of a knight errant, he launches into a distinction that we have seen before. Not all knights can be courtly, nor can or should all courtly knights be knights errant. Again, Don Quixote clearly despises decadent knights. In other words, courtly advisors who rule the world at a safe distance, looking over a map or fussing over childish things and other ceremonies, such as whether or not one carries a shorter lance or sword. Don Quixote seems crazy because his examples of superior caballeros come from fantasy literature. But if we listen closely, he is criticizing the corruption of the modern political class. Which are important aspects of part two, chapter six? A, Cervantes' compositional impertinence and a political tone. B, Sancho Panza's lifestyle and a melancholic tone. C, the Duchess's feminist attitude and a comical tone. Correct answer, A, Cervantes' compositional impertinence and a political tone. Now the niece adds another layer of meaning to the discussion. Recalling the burning of the books in part one, she says that Don Quixote's chivalric novels are heretical and that if they are not to be put to death, then they should at least be made to dress like the victims of the Inquisition. All that you say about knights errant is fake and false, and their histories, if they weren't burned, deserve every last one of them to be clothed in a San Benito or some sign that would indicate their infamy. Remember this image of the penitent heretic wearing his San Benito. It will appear again in important episodes. Continuing the theme, Don Quixote labels his niece's comment blasphemy. In his own particular way, and in reference to distinct categories of knights, he voices humanistic concern with personal virtue. Note also how his words lash out at courtly advisors who advocate monetary devaluation. Some are discourteous cowards, nor are those called knights all knights through and through for some are gold and others are alchemical, and all appear to be knights, but not all can pass the test of the touchstone of truth. That's all for now. We'll see each other in our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.